What's up, everybody? I'm Dan Roto, and today I'm at Ripley's Aquarium where I'm learning how to train a shark. Now I'm on my way to the kitchen where I'm gonna learn about food prep, but also whip up these guys some breakfast. Dave, what are we making today? Yeah, so today for my sharks, we have some nice mahi fillets. Uh, we also have some capelin, small oily fish, and then we're gonna top that up with some squid at the end as well. So being out in the aquarium, I noticed that the sharks are also in the same tank as a bunch of these live fish. So why is a shark not gonna wanna eat a live fish versus what we're feeding them here? Well, the simple answer is a well-fed shark is not gonna go out of its way to hunt something down. A shark that's eaten a lot, once it's full, it's done feeding. This food actually looks kinda delicious. Is this like the same stuff you'd see at a sushi restaurant? It absolutely is. So all the food we have here at the aquarium is actually restaurant quality. So if you were going to have a nice mahi fillet for your dinner, this is absolutely what you could get. So it's human grade food? Human grade food, if it's going to be good enough for animals, it has to be good enough for us too. We have specially designed vitamins that are shark and ray specific. So this is made optimal for their diet. So what are we prepping for? Like what type of shark? The sharks we're going to be feeding today, or rather that I'll be feeding today, are our Indo-Pacific reef sharks. And I'm going to be focusing specifically on my zebra sharks. So what I'm prepping right now, I'm prepping pretty large pieces, and that's because I'm actually going to be going in and doing a training session with my sharks today. And guess what, bud? You're coming with me. I'm going to the tank with you. Do you guys know this? Before I get into the tank with Dave, there's still a few more things I have to learn about training sharks. Okay, Andrew, I was just in the kitchen, and I just learned how to prep mahi filet. Yes. What are we feeding these guys, these bonnethead sharks? Yes, the bonnethead sharks. So Dave was telling you how we tailor the diet to something that they would eat more in their natural environment. And that's exactly what we've done today with our bonnethead sharks. They are typically going to be cruising through the seagrass beds, searching for some benthic invertebrates like Dave was talking about. So today we are feeding them some shrimp. You're gonna teach me how to essentially hand feed a bonnethead shark. So we're actually going to be tong feeding them. Stick feeding them. So tong we've got feed. these tongs here and we'll grab the food, but we're also using the food as a reward for a training session today. We'll be training them to touch this target to come and get their food. Here at Ripley's we focus on behaviors that assist us with the care of the animals. By target training them we can actually use that as a tool to lead them over to the vet for an inspection or uh, into a stretcher to do a physical exam. These sharks in particular are very timid animals which is pretty common for hammerheads as a family. And there we go. That is amazing. Can I give it a go? Absolutely. There is some skill here. For there sure. is okay. a bit of skill. Oh, these poor guys are just hitting the target and they're like, where's the food? Okay. Oh. So you'll want to hold it actually low in the water for them to grab it. There we wow. go. Wow. Like this one I feel like has eaten like all of them. Actually, that's her first piece. Oh wow, <laughs> so you know them all. Oh yes. So essentially we're reverse fishing. We're like feeding them feeding the into their mouth. Exactly. Okay, Andrew, thanks so much for the experience. I gotta go learn about some nurse sharks now. Have fun. Hey, Kat. Hi, Dan, welcome. So what's going on here? Uh, we are going to be working with some of our nurse sharks. So we okay. have three nurse sharks in this exhibit and uh, they are currently trained to come uh, hold their noses on top of this target. And I can use this target to guide them around the exhibit and ask them to do other tasks. So what's the purpose of this training then? Well, uh, we use training for many different reasons, but one of the primary ones I use with these guys is to give them a chance to participate in their own husbandry. So I can use these techniques to ask them to hold perfectly still for a vet checkup, or I can ask them to go to a certain part of the exhibit and maybe stay out of the way of something else that's happening. All right, let's give it a go. And we're going to give them a cue to let them know. I've turned off the jet on here, and I'm going to sound the dinner bell. It's like, will they hear this? Or are they going to sense it or something? They can absolutely detect it, and primarily they're going to feel the vibrations in the water. Water conducts sound beautifully. Follow that target right on here, and he's going to stay spot on. And that's kind of like the little extra dinner bell that knows he's doing a good job. Hey. Ooh, you really got to drop that fish in a perfect timing. Yeah, that pretty good. Like He'll catch it. <laughs> So is he sucking it in? Yeah, they have a really strong suction that they'll use to pull up invertebrates out of the sand. So crabs and shrimp and things like that. They're so smart. You deserve that one, buddy. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Kat. This Pleasure. This was a really cool experience. I think now it's my turn to get in the tank. You are going to go to the next step of shark training. Okay, Dave, let's do this. We're yeah. gonna feed them the food that we 
filleted this morning. Exactly. So that's exactly right. Uh, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we're gonna be focusing on these two lovely ladies right here. These ladies are huge. Yeah. So if you pop down here real quick, okay. don't mind the water. It's a oh, very cool. nice 73. These guys are getting real friendly down here. Oh yeah, they're gonna get very friendly. The only way you can really train a shark oh, is to use a reinforcing agent. How do you reinforce a shark? We offer them food rewards. When I want to do one of these training sessions, I'll make sure to prep extra food so that I can work with these two girls. So when they exhibit a behavior that we want, that's when we reward them. So likewise, if they did a behavior we do not want, so if they were nippy, if they're a little too pushy, we wouldn't offer them food. We don't want to reinforce that behavior. When you first got in this tank, I'm noticing how you're touching them. It's almost like how you would kind of play with a puppy. You're gentle, you're like, no, go this way or whatever. Right. Was that scary? Because this is like, these guys are intimidating. I mean, when you're working with any large animal, there is always going to be some inherent risks. It's funny that you mentioned a puppy. It's comparable, right? So if you want your dog to do a trick, roll over, whatever, you would have to use a reinforcing agent. You're going to roll it over? Yep. Oh my, you are handling it like a football. Wow. So now she's done the behavior we want, so we're going to make sure to reinforce that. And we're going to do that once again by giving oh her a gosh. treat. And so the idea here is that the vet can come and draw blood, it's for yep. samples? So now it's easier to get an ultrasound and it's easier to get a blood drop. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Look at that. So, are you kissing it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of the benefit of working with them. So if we're going to be doing routine checkups with these animals, yep. we don't want that to be a stressful process. So how we do that is desensitization training. Specifically, we're getting them used to being handled. All right, so now he's going to lift one of the sharks out of the water. And I'm holding the food. <laughs> oh, oh, here, picking up the shark. Picking up the shark. Wow. So they're actually surprisingly light. So despite being a fairly big animal, because they have a cartilaginous endoskeleton, it doesn't weigh nearly as much as a bony animal. Okay, Dave, thank you so much for this. This is definitely one of the coolest experiences I've had with sharks and the closest. Yeah. All right, I'll leave you here. Yeah. Your thing. Today's experience at Ripley's Aquarium was incredible. Getting to chat with the aquarist really showed me how much care goes into these sharks' lives. Here are my three takeaways. One, the training that you saw today was for behavioral purposes and not for tricks. It's so a vet can get in the water, draw blood, and make sure that these sharks are the healthiest that they can possibly be. Two, it takes a robust team of people to take care of these sharks. Everything from their sleep schedule, their diet, to the very water that they live in all matters. And three, sharks really aren't that scary. Despite their bad reputation in Hollywood movies, if you give them respect, they'll give it right back. Those are my three takeaways. Catch you guys in the next one.